In this video, how to withdraw crypto from your MetaMask wallet back into your bank account. This is the process that we're going to go through in this video. As of right now, MetaMask does not let you cash out of crypto directly within MetaMask and send it back to either a bank account or a card. And so what we have to do is go through a fiat currency on an off-ramp. So this video is going to go through getting your assets over, over a, a blockchain onto a crypto exchange, selling that back into fiat currency, and then getting that back into either a bank account or a card. I'll leave timestamps for these sections down in the description below. Like I said, as of making this video, we cannot cash out of our crypto directly from MetaMask into our bank account. It just doesn't let us do that. You can buy crypto with a card, but we cannot sell directly to a card. And so we need a fiat currency on an off ramp like a crypto exchange. There are other third party on and off ramps as well, like Changely or MoonPay. Um, these are decent and they may work in your region, but they are very expensive. And so I would recommend a dedicated crypto exchange. It's going to be way, way cheaper for trading fees and uh, other fees as well. So uh, which is the best exchange for that? It's going to be dependent on your region. BitGet is very good for EU and UK. They have good pound sterling and euro on and off ramps. Bybit is decent in some jurisdictions, but not others for on and off ramps. Um, so check that in your region. Binance again. UK is not great. A lot of banking uh, partnerships have been taken away. However, uh, it might still work in your region. Coinbase is very, very good for on and off ramps in most countries that they operate as well. I'll leave links to all of these down below. You can check out uh, the details, maybe some deposit and trading bonuses if you're new as well. I'll also leave full tutorial videos for all of those exchanges so you can see how to get set up with accounts, how to do your KYC information on them. Because if you want to deal with fiat currency, you absolutely 100% need KYC on those exchanges, which just means your ID card and the bank details need to all match up. So I'll leave the tutorial videos for that down in the description. The next step though, if you have an exchange already, is we need to know which assets are supported on these exchanges. Because what we need to do is swap our assets into the fiat currency. So very simply go to your MetaMask right here and get the asset that you have. I'll show you very simply with Ethereum. So whichever network that you're using, that has to be supported by the exchange that you're gonna send it into and the asset needs to be supported as well. So go over to your crypto exchange. I'll just show you as an example here on Binance with ETH. So I've searched for ETH and we can see Ethereum is supported. You can search for other coins as well. So if you have you know, another coin like uh, Doge or something like that, you can see Doge is supported. Even Pepe is supported right here. So if you have any of these coins, um, then obviously you have to make sure that they're supported because if they're not supported, then you can't send them into the exchange to you know, trade for fiat currency. So what you can see here, Ethereum is supported. I'm gonna press deposit right here. So whichever exchange that you're using, just search for the asset and search for the deposit option as well. And now it's gonna tell you if the asset is supported on which network is it supported. So I'm gonna click select network here. And you can see that Ethereum is actually supported on a bunch of different networks. So maybe you have ETH tokens on Arbitrum instead of ETH mainnet. That's fine, you can just choose these networks, no problem. So I've got ETH here and it is supported on the ETH mainnet. So that's good. And I know that my ETH that I have in my MetaMask is a supported asset on um, you know, Binance and then I can trade it for fiat currency and I can send it into Binance very easily. The second thing to be aware of if you have tokens that aren't a base layer token. So I've just shown you Ethereum here, which is a base layer coin. Because we're using MetaMask, it's a blockchain based wallet. We have our assets on the blockchain. We need to pay a blockchain fee every time we send the uh, crypto assets into an exchange, obviously. So what's important is if you have a meme coin or something else or whatever, that isn't a base layer coin, then you are going to need some of the gas token to pay for that transaction. So as you can see here, I've got some US dollar tether, or I don't have any, but I have the asset here. And if I wanted to send that into Binance, I would need some ETH to pay for that gas, at least on the Ethereum mainnet. If I switch over to the Binance Smart Chain, what you can see here is I have some other tokens. Let's say I have some US dollar tether or another stable coin here. I wanna send that into Binance. I need to pay for gas on the Binance Smart Chain in BNB. And so we need those gas tokens in. If you're using MetaMask and you're looking to withdraw, you know, I assume you have this anyway and you know this, but if you don't, this is important. So those gas tokens need to be on the network that you're sending the asset from. If it's the layer one token, no issue. 
if you have a, a secondary token that's issued on the chain, you still need the gas token. And so if you don't have that, you can't send it out of MetaMask in order to exchange it for fiat currency. If no exchanges support the token that you have, you can actually swap it for a larger token first before sending it into the exchange. Um, so as an example here, let's say I have a meme coin or something you know, in my MetaMask and none of the exchanges support it. How do I cash out? Well, what you're gonna have to do is actually swap it on the blockchain first and swap it into a larger token that's accepted at exchanges. So what we can do here is use MetaMask Swap itself. Now you can use decentralized exchanges as well. You can use Uniswap or PancakeSwap. I'll leave tutorials for those below. Um, but if you have you know, smaller amounts, uh, you can just press swap right here. So what we're gonna do is press swap in the middle. Um, I can do this. I'm, I've got some Matic here. I can switch out to another token. So maybe I've got some wrapped teeth. You can see I've got some wrapped teeth here maybe wrapped teeth isn't supported or whatever, we can select a token that is supported. What would I swap it into? Well, one of two options, either swap it into a stable coin, which is really easy because that's accepted everywhere. Or if you want to clear your wallet completely, swap it into the layer one coin on the network that you're using. And then you can just sweep the whole entire lot into the exchange at once, pay the fee, and you'll be left with a zero balance. If you swap it into a stable coin, you'll still need to leave a little bit of the layer one coin to pay for gas, which gets a bit messy. So it's up to you which one you want to do. So let's say we want to swap that uh, uh, wrap teeth into Matic right here. We can press max. It's going to give us that swap data uh, and show us you know, what that swap is. So we're swapping out the asset that isn't supported into a large layer one coin that is supported everywhere. Swap that into the exchange and then set out for fiat currency. So you can press swap there that will swap it into the layer one coin go back to your metamask and you should see the layer one coin right here has that balance and that dollar balance and then you can send that out to the exchange later now we need to get the crypto assets from our metamask out into the exchange so what i'd recommend firstly before doing this is getting set up with the exchange itself like i said i'll leave all the tutorial videos down in the description but mainly you need KYC details if you're dealing with fiat currency. So that's an ID card or passport, um, proof of address. The bank accounts that you're using that you're going to link up with the exchange need to be exactly the same as all of your all of your details, including your name and address and everything. Otherwise, they're just not going to accept it. Um, so what you're going to have to do is sign up for an account that takes two minutes. Then the KYC probably will take an hour or so or within five minutes, usually uh, depending. And then the bank details that may take a little bit longer. What you may have to do is actually make a deposit of cash into the exchange of like a dollar or something like that to prove that you have the ability to do it. And then they'll kind of accept that. And they, then they will allow that um, on an off ramp to exist. And then any assets that you have can be withdrawn to your bank. It's going to be changing depending on which uh, platform that you're using. But when you sign up for account, it will be very simple to say link your bank account and then they'll have to either uh, approve one transaction or not. We'll give you details about that. So it's going to be different for the exchange that you're using and the on and off ramp that you're using as well. Um, so we'll leave that to the individual platform. You can look at the help details there. But what we need to do now is once we've got that set up is deposit some assets into our account. So I'm going to search for ETH here, I'm going to press deposit. Like, a, like we saw earlier, we just need to make sure that the asset that we want to deposit is supported and the chain that we want to send it on is supported. So I'm going to select network and select ETH mainnet and it's going to give me my deposit address as you can see here. Now what I want to check if I go to the uh, the MetaMask is that we have ETH on ETH mainnet and then we can send that in. So what I can also do is switch networks and check if the assets that I have on this network are supported on Binance as well. If they are no problem, if they aren't, you're going to have to choose assets that are on chains that are supported for deposits. So Optimism is supported. If I had assets on Optimism, then I could send those in as well, no problem. And it's going to give me those details. So I've got my deposit address here for ETH on the ETH mainnet. And that's my deposit deposit address. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go over to my MetaMask and I'm going to click send right here. And I'm going to send to, I'm just going to paste that address in. It says, this is address that's recognized. How much do you want to send? I'm going to send max here. It's going to tell me that the uh, gas fee is around a dollar. I'm going to press next right here at the bottom. It's going to confirm those details and it's just going to send that ETH into my deposit address, which is on the exchange that we just saw. Once the crypto has been deposited into your exchange account, what we now need to do is sell that crypto for a fiat currency. Now, not every single crypto exchange 
accepts uh, every single crypto trading to fiat currency. So again, you're going to have to check in your region and the uh, platforms that are supported in your region. Like I said, UK and Europe, BitGet is very good for trading into euros and pounds. In U the US, you might want to just go for Coinbase or Kraken is really good in, in the jurisdictions that it's in as well. So like I said, I'll leave links to tutorials and links to the exchanges below. Um, so now that we have some ETH in our account or the asset that you've deposited, I'm going to go over and trade this. So you can see just above my head, there's a, there's a trade option. I'm going to click that and I'm just going to trade ETH uh, against euros here. So we can see this as an example. So on Binance, at least, they accept trading Ethereum into euros. So you can actually swap the crypto asset into fiat currency directly on uh, Binance, and you can have those euros in your fiat account within Binance. So what we can see here up in the top right, you should be able to see uh, assets that you can trade. It's tr uh, trading ETH against euros, as you can see here. So what I can do if I have an ETH account is very simply come down here and just say sell ETH. Um, so I'll sell the amount of ETH that I have. You can see I've got um, yeah, eight dollars, eight euros worth here, right? So sell ETH and that would go into euros. I won't go through how to trade in this example. It literally is that simple. But if you're looking for a bit more in-depth on how to trade, uh, again, those videos are in the description. If we can look at ETH though, what I'm going to do is go over to Fiat Currency, Fiat right here, and I'm just going to type ETH. And you should see that ETH is now traded against a bunch of different fiat currencies. So you, you have ETH against Turkish Lira. You have ETH against uh, Reals, Brazilian Reals, Euros, Pound Sterling, Rubles, um, you know, a bunch of different fiat currencies right here. So if it's supported, that's great. Switch it into the fiat currency. And then if uh, the on and off ramp is supported in your region, you have that fiat currency in Binance to withdraw. Um, so you can do that with other uh, assets as well. Now, what I would say is Bitcoin, ETH, and stable coins have really good fiat currency support. So you can switch them into a fiat currency pretty easily on most exchanges. If you have a meme coin or something is a bit smaller, it's probably not gonna be supported for direct trading to a fiat currency. So what you may have to do, if you have a smaller coin, uh, let's try Uniswap or something, which is a, you know, a big coin, but it may not have fiat currency pairs. What you'd have to do first is take Uni, so a token, swap that into a larger coin, either Bitcoin, ETH or dollars. And then from dollars, you can very easily switch the dollar stable coin like Tether or BUSD, something like that. You can switch that very easily into a fiat currency on most platforms. So what I would suggest is if you've sent in a, a coin that isn't supported, switch it into US dollar Tether first, which is the US dollar stable coin. You can switch that into a fiat currency on most platforms very easily as well. Um, so you, you might have to do that. So you might have to go through a, th a few different stages before actually getting it back into the fiat currency. Now that you have a fiat currency balance on your exchange, you can now withdraw that to your linked bank account or a card uh, or other payment option that may be available. If you're using Coinbase in the UK, I believe they still support PayPal as a withdrawal. So you might want to use that. Um, so what we can do is get the fiat currency that we have. So I'll show you with pound sterling here. I can withdraw this and then it's just going to simply give uh, give me the options. So if you haven't linked to anything up already, it will ask you to link up your bank account and all of the details have to match, including your name, your address and everything on there. Otherwise, they just, you know, they, they're just not going to let you do it. So you have a, a pound sterling balance or a euro balance and it's going to give you the options. So bank transfer or bank card. Um, so the bank card has a 1.8% fee on Binance. It may have different fees on different platforms. So press continue here. And it's just going to ask you for the details. So again, you should have linked up your bank when you set up your account. Uh, and then you just have to go through that. So what it's going to ask for is your banking details, account details and everything. And it's just going to send that transaction out to your bank. Now, if it's blocked or anything like that in your region, you might want to try different payment services like Wise or Revolut or something like that, um, just to give you better fiat currency options and, and better options for deposits and withdrawals from these exchanges. But you need the fiat currency and then whichever option that the exchange supports then you can use that to withdraw back out to a bank account that you can actually link to the exchange. I'll leave the other tutorial videos and helpful guides down in the description below. Links to the exchanges if you want to check them out as well. I'm James with Money's Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.